call this meeting to order. It's approximately 6.05 p.m. Central Standard Time. Welcome, everyone. And I've asked Councilman Don Garvin to do the invocation this evening. Father in heaven, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for this opportunity to serve our Cherokee people. We ask now that you would bless each of us cause us to use our knowledge and wisdom to make wise decisions. Father, I want to pray for our military personnel all over the world defending our country. Pray for their families. I pray that you'd bless each of us tonight. Forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Ms. Shelley Gritton, would you please do the roll call for us? Bill Here. Bill John Baker? Here. Jack Baker? Here. Julia Cutts? Here. Cody Fishingham? Here. Uncle Bright? Here. Don Garvin? Here. Chuck Hoskin Jr.? Here. Hannah Glory Jordan? Present. Lee Keener Jr.? Uh-huh, Lee. Lake? Here. Curtis Nell? Here. David Thornton? David Walking Stick? Here. Kara Callan Watts? Uh-huh, We do have a quorum. Thank you. Now moving on to approval of minutes for the previous meetings. We have the August 12, 2011 special session and the August 22, 2011 regular session. Do I hear a motion to approve? I make a motion that both be approved. Second. I have a motion by Jack Baker and a second by Councilman Lee Keener. Are there any comments or questions or concerns? Seeing none. All in it, please note uh, we have Councilman Thornton has entered the chambers, so he would be on the roll call. Um, and it, we should probably give you a round of applause for even being here. <laughs> We're all glad to see you back, Councilman Thornton. Well, thank you. <laughs> so, appreciate the word all. <laughs> he looks good. So we have a motion to approve the August 12th and August 22nd in a second. So all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Thank you. Now we have the State of the Nation by Acting Chief Joe Crittenden. Habits are hard to break. I uh, actually voted for that last motion. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, starting tonight uh, with remembrances, uh, we'd like to begin by recognizing our Cherokee friends and family members who have passed on in the past month. We had Philip Post Oak, house painter and mayor of Oaks, it says here. Jessica Kingfisher, Cherokee National Youth. Choir member, Johnny Holt, employee of Oklahoma Natural Gas and Vietnam Vet, native of Owasso. Kay Lane was Cherokee Nation at one time. Are there others that you all know about? Councilman Hoffman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Lee McCoy of Craig County. Councilman Keener. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Diane Wadley of Chelsea, the great grand or granddaughter of uh, J. B. Milam. Uh, Ronnie S. Gorn of Tahlequah. Amber Marlowe of Laverne, Oklahoma. Any others? Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Tonight we honor three Cherokee veterans. The first one is Charles R. Johnson. How are you, sir? 
Mr. Johnson was born in Fresno, California to Charles W. and Janine Johnson. He graduated from Caldwell High School in Caldwell, Texas in 1986, leaving for Marine Corps basic training that night. He served as a mechanic with the 4th Battalion, 12th Marine in Okinawa, Japan from 1987 to 1988. From 1988 to November of 92, he served with Marine Wing Support Squadron 273 from Marine Corps Air Station, Beaufort, South Carolina. His military training includes basic automotive mechanics, airfield security school, and the Arctic Warfare Leaders Course. He was promoted to sergeant in December of 1992. Charles served in Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm, serving in Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. He received a number of service awards, including the Good Conduct Medal, National Defense Service Medal, and the Humanitarian Service Medal. Charles was honorably discharged in November of 92 due to disabilities from his service in Desert Storm. He worked in the automotive and motorcycle industries until 2001. From October of 2001 to 2003, he served as a police officer in Conway Springs, Kansas. Charles is now retired and lives in Tahlequah with two of his six children. Charles, congratulations. from the Cherokee Nation of Medal of Patriotism and the Warrior Award and Appreciation of Your Military Service. Next, we have Glenn D. Pallone. Mr. Pallone was raised in Westville, Oklahoma. He is the son of Richard and Elsie Pallone. His father was an original Cherokee and Rolee. While still in high school, Glenn enlisted in the 45th Division of the Oklahoma Army National Guard in 1957. Transfer, er, transferring to the Air Force in 1959 after graduating Westville High School. He was sent to Lackland Air Force Base in Texas for basic training and then to Amarillo Air Force Base to technical school. After training, he served as Air Force bases in France and Normandy, serving after that at Clinton Sherman Air Force Base in Oklahoma from 1961 to 1967 during the Cold War. In 67 and 68, he worked gathering data for CIA and was stationed several locations, including the Panama Canal and Chile. He then worked at McClellan Air Force Base in California, where he analyzed data for the CIA for five years. In 1973, he was sent to Taquili. How do you say that? Taquili Air Force Base in Thailand for a year. He returned to the States and served at two bases in Missouri for the next 16 years. During his service, Glenn was awarded the Air Force Meritorious Service Medal and a number of other medals, including the National Defense Medal. Glenn received an honorable discharge in May of 1980 and returned to Oklahoma. He is a disabled veteran presently living at Cookson and works at Cherokee Nation W.W. W. Hastings Hospital in the Biomedical Engineering Department. Glenn has worked for Hastings for 28 years.
Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief Sharp. Thank you, Chief Sharp. Yes, I am honored to serve two great nations, America and the Cherokee Nation. Yeah. Next, we have Otis Green. Greece, I'm sorry. Sorry about that name, sir. It's Greece, right? He was born in Tulsa County and raised in Collinsville, Oklahoma. He enlisted in the Navy when he was 17 years old. Did you get one of these Kitty Cruz three-year uh, programs at 17? Well, I did too, matter of fact. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Finishing his last year of high school in the Navy. He is the second generation in his family to enlist in the Navy. He was sent to San Diego, California for basic training, and after graduating, graduation, he was assigned to the USS Proston. They, they, they mispronounced, they, they left this off. It's P-R-O-S-T-O-N here. Sproston? Sproston. Okay. Whose home port was Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. He was aboard the Sproston from 1954 to 58. Assigned gun captain of a rapid-fire gun mount, he was honorably discharged in 1958. After four years aboard the USS Sproston, Otis became a merchant seaman, traveling to several foreign countries. He also sailed on ships with supplies and ammunition that were taken to Vietnam for the war effort. Otis has been married 49 years. He and his wife have two daughters and five grandchildren, one of whom is a U.S. Marine currently stationed in Okinawa. He also has several great grandchildren. Uh, awards and photos. I guess that's the end of it. I thought that was some more of yours. The Cherokee Nation welcomed thousands of people at this year's Cherokee National Holiday. We had especially large crowds at the parade, the powwow, and the Cherokee Heritage Center this year. Oklahoma's Lieutenant Governor Todd Lamb recently toured Cherokee Nation Industries Aerospace Facility in Stillwell as part of a focus on small business and economic development. Lamb said he was impressed with Cherokee Nation's business diversification and success in working to attract international businesses to locate in our area. Construction of the Cherokee Nation Veterans Center is moving forward. The new center will include office space, a library, and a community room with a kitchen. It will be a place where veterans can hold gatherings and get help assessing benefits. We began pouring the slab last week. Structural steel will be brought in soon, and then we'll start the framing phase. A paid crew is working on the center right now, but volunteers will be needed this fall for the later building stages. Under events and general announcements, Native American farmers are invited to attend a series of meetings being held here at Cherokee Nation regarding the Keep Siegel versus the USDA settlement. Representatives will be available in the community room on September the 13th, 14th, 15th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. to provide information regarding how joint, how join the discrimination case settlement. We will have a ribbon cutting at 10 a.m. on September the 27th for our new compressed natural gas station located at the outpost here at the complex. Precincts have been finalized for the September 24th special election for Principal Chief. A full list is available at www.cherokee.org. Four precinct locations have changed slightly because the previous locations were not available this time around. Those include Tahlequah Sequoia Schools, which will now be in the old gym, 
Grove Precinct. Voters will now go to the Stonebrook Inn Hotel. Chelsea voters will vote at the Boys and Girls Club, and Ulaga voters will go to the Ulaga Community Center to vote. All other precinct locations remain the same. I'd also like to remind voters that early walk-in voting is available starting this Saturday at the Election Commission office from 9 to 5. You can also vote early at the same location and time on September 20, 21, and 22. Please exercise your right as tribal citizens to vote. Madam Speaker, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, We have no action of unfinished business. There are committee reports now. We have monthly reports from Housing Authority Director, Group Leader David Sutherland. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. To be here this evening, uh, I'll have a brief report. Uh, next Housing Authority board meeting uh, will be Tuesday the 20th, which is a week from tomorrow. Uh, it'll be at noon at the Aline Hogner Conference Room over at the Housing Authority building. Uh, I'm not certain of everything that'll be on the agenda, but the board will consider uh, moving approximately 10 homes from the mortgage program to one of our lease programs. Uh, we've had a difficult time filling some of those mortgage homes over the past few months, so we're going to move them into the lease program, which will be easier to fill. Uh, I want to take a couple of minutes to recognize Marvin Jones. Uh, Marvin's worked for the tribe uh, and housing authority uh, for many years. I, I think he was there in the early 1980s. Uh, he's retiring later this week. Uh, like I said, he's been in housing since the early 80s. He's represented the tribe during negotiated rulemaking several times over the years. And he's uh, recognized as an expert around the country uh, in the HOSDA regulations and statute. Uh, I've worked with Marvin in one capacity or another since 97 uh, and uh, have a lot of respect for what he does. Uh, of course, I've said all those nice things because i got a meeting with him tomorrow and I need to pick his brain. And uh, I'm sure he's watching tonight, but uh, uh, Cherokee Nation is going to miss Marvin and I'll miss Marvin and I wish him well uh, in his retirement. Uh, so just wanted to mention that tonight here at the meeting and I recognize Mr. Jones. Uh, that's my report for the evening. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to. Mr. Sutherland, are there any questions from the council? Seeing none, thank you for your time this thank evening. You. Next, we have Cherokee Nation Business and CEO David Stewart. Good evening. Good evening. evening. I'm reporting on uh, June financial results. Uh, we uh, have a good report. <clears throat> Our June and year to date numbers are exceeding last year. Uh, and I'm told that our July numbers are almost a record, so uh, we're to commend all of our employees for their hard work. The casino projects underway, uh, Ramona and Fort Gibson, we have renderings of those facilities if you'd like to see those. Uh, and also we have Tahlequah on hold pending the finalization of the uh, site plan. Uh, we just completed our budget for 2011 and we'll present that to our board of directors on September 26th. Uh, that would conclude my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any? Councilman Keener. Thank you, Madam Speaker. David, how is the uh, new office space on, I think it's on Pine Street, North Tulsa, how's that progressing? Well, it's uh, progressing very well. We occupy, I think, about 50% of the space now, and we're getting ready to finish out another uh, third of it, so we definitely have room for growth, uh, and we're about to get all of our smaller companies moved over there, so it's working out very well. And I had an ulterior motive for asking. Oh, you do? So uh, I was wondering if you had a commons area that could maybe accommodate uh, Cherokee Tulsa group to meet there in the evenings possibly? Uh, yes, I just have to check you know on the timing and make sure someone was there to let them in and so on. Okay, yeah. if, you, if you would please let me know on that okay. and then I'll convey that to them that they can meet there. Okay. Thank you very much. Councilman Keener, were you finished? Yes, thank you. Any other councilmen or councilwomen have questions? Seeing none, thank you for okay. your time thank this you. evening. Mr. Mm -hmm. Stewart. We have, going on to old business, we have none pending. Madam Speaker. Yes, Councilman Baker. In our special rules committee this afternoon, we passed a resolution at the establishing today the special election to fill a vacancy for the Cedar Council, former Councilor Joe Critton and now Anchor Chief Joe Critton. 
District 2 of the Cherokee Nation Tribal Council. I make a motion that we amend the agenda to include this resolution. Second. So we have a motion to amend the agenda by Councilman Jack Baker and a second by Councilman Lee Keener. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. By acclamation, it will be amended. Make that the last item, item number nine. Going on uh, to new business under rules. Thank you, Councilman Baker. Under rules committee, item number one uh, is a resolution for the reappointment of Jason Soper, who is with us today as Commissioner of the Cherokee Nation Gaming Commission. Councilman Anglin. Yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. I move that we uh, confirm uh, Jason Soper uh, to uh, reappoint him. Second the motion. We have a motion by Councilman England and a second by Councilman Garvin, and we appreciate you being here, Mr. Soper. Are there any comments or questions? Yes, Councilwoman Fulbright. I have was absent last time earlier. I would like to be added as a sponsor for him. Councilman England. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. So we will add Councilwoman Fulbright as a sponsor. Looks like you're liked, Mr. Soper. So. Are there any other questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor of Mr. Soper's reappointment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Thank you again for your service uh, to the Cherokee Nation Gaming Commission, Mr. Soper, and your time this evening. Item number two, we have an act uh, relating to amendment of the Cherokee Nation General Corporation Act. By, as amended, which would increase the dividend and provide for severability and declare an emergency. Councilman uh, Bill John Baker is uh, the sponsor. Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, this is a, a act that uh, will change the dividend that we're receiving now from, uh, from our corporations from 30% uh, to 35%. The additional 5% will go to, uh, uh, to the health department, uh, mainly contract health, and uh, it's not limited to, but eyeglasses, dentures, prosthesis, cancer treatments, hearing aids, and contract health. The, uh, you know, we, in committee today, we were told that uh, at Claremore alone, there's over uh, 5,120 cases of contract health that were denied. Uh, they say it would equal about five million dollars. Well, that's about what this five percent amounts to. Now they're all not Cherokees because Claremore serves other tribes. The, we don't have the numbers at Hastings, but last month there was a fun, hundred and forty eight people that were denied contract health. And even though that's ninety six percent were approved, if you're one of the 4% that wasn't, it's a big deal, folks. Sir, Councilman Baker, do you have a motion? Oh, yes. I, I will make a motion that we approve this act, uh, taking 5% or an additional 5% that goes into contract health. And I put it in the form of a motion. Second, Madam Speaker. And I see if there was a second by Councilman Hoskin. Yes, Councilman Jack Baker. Yes, Madam Speaker. The 5% increase is to go for health care and it's never been discussed in our health committee so I make a motion that we table this to our next health committee meeting. Second. Okay so we have a, a motion to table from Councilman Jack Baker and a second by Councilman Lee Keener. A motion to table is not debatable. All those in favor of tabling this to health committee please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed same sign. Aye. aye. Roll, Roll call, call vote please. John Garvin? Yes. Chuck Hoskin, Jr.? No. Anna Glory Jordan? No. Lee Keener, Jr.? Yes. Dick Light? No. Curtis Snell? No. David Thornton? Yes. David Walking Stick? No. Kara Callan Watt? Yes. Bill Anglin? Yes. Bill John Baker? No. Jack Baker? Yes. Julia Coates? Yes. Jody Fishinghoff? No. Janelle Colbert? Yes. I believe the motion to table passes 8 to 7. 
Is that correct? Thank you, Ms. Britton. So this has been tabled back to health and we will hear it at the next month's health committee. So moving on to item number three, we have an act establishing procedures and requirements for the naming of buildings or facilities of the Cherokee Nation and its entities. Councilman Hoskin is the sponsor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I'd uh, move for its approval and then uh, make a few comments. We have a motion to approve and by Councilman Hoskin and a second by Councilwoman Glory Jordan. And Councilman Hoskin. Thank you. Briefly, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the issue uh, is whether the council should be on par with the administration in terms of doing a very important act, which is naming our public buildings. This legislation does that, and I would uh, encourage its uh, passage tonight. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Councilman Hoskin. Is there any other comments? Seeing none, we'll take up the motion. Yes, Councilman Thornton. I just wonder if you'd entertain a motion to add bridges and roads to that. Is that a friendly amendment, Councilman Thornton? Yeah. I, I would accept the Councilman's friendly amendment it, it, to, to include bridges and roads in the naming, um, certainly. And I would agree okay, so the friendly amendment has been accepted. I'm unclear, I guess, if it's owned by us and we name it, that would be great. I don't know if the county or the state might be the one naming it, though. So I, I assume that would have an exception it, that's only if we have control of naming it. Depends it. on whose money they're using. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Councilman Hoskin. And Madam Speaker, I, I would point out that it's not uncommon for Cherokee Nation to name certain projects. That Those names may not endure in the form of a state recognition, but certainly we name certain road projects, the Karakowan. Uh, road project, for I example. Hope not. Uh, and, uh, I certainly wouldn't object if we did that, but uh, but but in any case, so I think that we can work uh, language into the uh, legislation that would embrace what the councilman wants to do, which I agree with. And if we need to um, put a little, put some simple language together, I'm sure that we can. Yeah, I'm concerned about that we're at full council and putting that language on. Do you have? Specifically, what is that language first? Recording secretary? And to clear, make sure all minds are clear before we take a vote? Certainly, Madam Speaker, if I could. And, and I hadn't visited with the councilman before the meeting to um, discuss this. I, I do think it's a, uh, he's been busy, he says, but uh, <laughs> busy getting, uh, getting healthy, and I applaud that. Um, I, I think what I would recommend to the councilman is that uh, certainly we can amend this act at the next meeting. Let's pass it today and then he and I can get together on, a, on an amendment down the road. That way we can make sure and explore all these potential problems if they arise. So if the councilman would withdraw, then I would work with him in the coming okay. months on that. I'll withdraw. Okay, so the friendly amendment has been withdrawn. So we have the motion to approve item number three as written and as, provi as provided. Are all minds clear? Are there any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the original motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Your item passes unanimously. Congratulations. Councilman Hoskin. We now have resource committee. We have item number four, and I believe uh, Councilman Snell wanted to also combine item number five for land into trust resolution. Councilman Snell? Yes. <coughs> <clears throat> Pardon me. This is a resolution authorizing the placement of land and trust called the Tillery property. That's item number four. Item number five will be a resolution authorizing the placement of land and trust called the First State property. Now move for its approval. Second. We have a motion to approve items number four and five in toto by Councilman Snell and a second by Councilman Bill John Baker. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Seeing no questions or comments, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Both items number four and five passed unanimously. Thank you. Now we move on to Executive and Finance Committee. We have item number six, uh, Councilman Jack Baker. This is uh, mod number 11 for fiscal year 2011 budget. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This mod 11 for 2011 budget has grants of 168,000, with 141,000 of that being for diabetes. We also have a budget increase of 287,000, with 275,000 of that being 
being for our day training program. And I make a motion that it be approved by acclamation. Second. So Councilman Jack Baker made the motion and Councilman Bill John Baker seconded. Are there any questions or comments? No questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor by acclamation signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. The budget mod 11 passes unanimously. Thank you, Councilman Baker. Item number seven, fiscal year 2012 comprehensive operating budget. Yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. This is our operating budget for the fiscal year 2012, which is $579 million in expenditures, which we discussed in our budget hearings earlier this month. And I make a motion that they be approved. Actually, in late August. I make a motion to be approved. Second. So we have a motion by Jack Baker to approve the 2012 budget with a second by Councilwoman Glory Jordan. Are there any questions, or comments, or concerns? Madam Speaker, I have a comment. Yes, Councilman Keener. Concern. Um, as a body, I just want to remind the council uh, about the contingency reserve, and um, I just want to make sure that we're all aware of that uh, money in there and being fiscally responsible to have that uh, populated with necessary money just in case we need it for whatever reason. Um, I want to be sure that as a council we know that uh, we need to keep that funded <coughs> properly. Thank you, Councilman Keener. Were there any other comments? I, I had uh, two comments. First of all, I want to thank uh, Chief Smith there during his administration and our treasurer Callie Ketcher and her team and then the continuation with acting chief Crittenden and the work that they did in bringing this budget forward uh, during a unique time in Cherokee history that we will be able to approve this budget in a timely manner so that we continue operations on October 1. I know a lot of people put a lot of energy in this budget process actually starts as soon as one is approved. So there's a, a year of work that went into this budget before it ever came to us in late August, uh, even in the middle of election season. So that in itself is an amazing feat and we appreciate all those and the leadership that was involved with making that happen. <clears throat> Um, more specifically around what Councilman Keener brought forward is we in our contingency reserve do not even have a full two-week payroll period. I, uh, it is with a lot of difficulty that I have decided to vote to support this this evening because I, uh, in our, trying to be fiscally responsible, believe that we should have multiple pay periods. So I know that I will be working to bring something else forward later. But for the meantime, it is up to this body to pass a budget to make sure that operations continue for the Cherokee Nation. So I hope we take a look back, Acting Chief Crittenden, um, while you're in office or whoever wins on the 24th to reconsider some of the items in the budget. Thank you. Yes, Madam Councilman Speaker. Jack Baker. I actually misspoke in the total number. The operating budget is 473 million, with our capital appropriation being 105 million, which we will take up in the next act. So it's actually 473 million rather than the 579 this time. For the operating. Thank yes. you for the clarification. Yes, Councilman Hoskin. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I'm certainly mindful of the need to keep. Um, adequate contingency reserve. I, I don't think we've reduced this to any dangerous level. I think history shows us that we have substantial carryover every year and history also shows us that we have substantial unmet need every year. And I think the council took a budget um, that needed work and we did work. And I appreciate everyone on the body doing that work and I think we got it done in a pretty efficient manner. And you've already mentioned him, but Acting Chief Crittenden came over literally rolled up his sleeves and uh, we worked it out and that was a I think a blessing and it allowed us to do some very specific things in this budget that were not in the budget when it came over to us so chief I applaud that and madam speaker I appreciate your work thank you are there any comment other comments or questions Seeing none, we'll move forward with the, the motion is to accept the budget as provided. Item number seven, all those in favor, is this by acclamation? Yes. All, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign? No. Um, roll call vote. <coughs> Jeanette 
Daniel Fulbright? Yes. Don Garvin? Yes. Chuck Hopkins Jr.? Yes. Anna Glory Jordan? Yes. Lee Keener Jr.? Yes. Dick Light? Yes. Curtis Snow? Yes. David Thornton? No. David Walking Stick? Yes. Kara Callan Watt? Yes. Bill Anglin? No. Bill John Baker? Yes. Jack Baker? Yes. Julia Coates? No. Jody Fishinghop? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Britton. Moving forward, it says item number seven passes, so thank you, staff, again. That's a <laughs> so now we have uh, item number eight, which is the capital appropriations budget for fiscal year 2012, and Councilman Jack Baker. Yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. This budget, as I stated earlier, is $105 million with more than 70 million of that being on our roads project. We also have over 2 million for the Jack Brown Center construction, 26 million for the Benita Clinic, and about 4 million for Hastings Hospital. So I make a motion that we approve it. Second. And the second is, so a motion by Councilman Jack Baker and a second by Councilman uh, Bill John Baker. Are there any questions, comments, concerns? Any questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, by acclamation, right? Yes. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. The, uh, the, the oper comprehensive operating or the, the work capital appropriations budget passes unanimously. Thank you. Now we have item number nine, which we amended the agenda earlier to include. This is the November 12th special election for the replacement of Joe Crittenden's council seat in District 2. And we have, that is Councilman Keener, please. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This is a resolution establishing the date of the special election to fill a vacancy for a council person for District 2 of the Cherokee Nation Tribal Council. And again, this is, uh, will be November 12th for that election. So I'll make a motion that we approve this. Do I hear a second? Sure. Councilman Snell seconds Councilman Keener's motion. Are there any questions or concerns? Questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. <coughs> the motion passes and there will be a District 2 special council election on Saturday, November 12th. Look for election dates from the Election Commission for Voter Logistics. There are no other items on our agenda. It is time for announcements. Are there any announcements? Are there any announcements? Councilman Keener. Uh, Linnell Gord Carney of Jinx at Large Citizen uh, was awarded a award of excellence from the Jinx school system. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. Are there any other? Think, yes, Councilman Walking Stick. I'd like to uh, introduce my mother, Dan Walking Stick. She's in attendance with us today. Thank you for coming out. Welcome. <laughs> did you have any other announcements, Councilman Walking Stick? Okay. Councilman Baker, did you have a. Yes, in case anybody has forgotten, there will be an election September 24th, and I encourage everybody to vote. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Keener and a second by Bill John Baker. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. <laughs>